And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Dystrophius, which was a request from Paleo Mike 716 via our Patreon and Discord. So thanks. Dystrophius was a sauropod that lived in the late Jurassic and what is now Utah in the U.S. in the Morrison Formation. It looked like other sauropods. It walked on all fours. It had the long neck and the long tail. It's estimated to weigh about 12 tons. The type species is Dystrophius via male. It was described in 1877 by Edward Cope, and the genus name means coarse joint. Hmm. It refers to the pitted joint surfaces on the limb bones that attached cartilage. The species name means of the bad road, and it refers to how hard it was to reach and excavate the fossils. <laughs> sort of like an irritator type name. Yeah, exactly. A partial skeleton was found, including a humerus, scapula, part of the radius, and some metacarpals. And these fossils were found in 1859 by John Strong Newbury. It was the first sauropod described from North America. In 1877, Cope said that Dystrophius was a Triassic dinosaur, but gave no other details. Then in 1882, Henri Amel Savage said that it was a sauropod. And then in 1895, Marsh said that it was a stegosaur. In 1904, Friedrich von Huhn thought that it was an herbivorous theropod, and then in 1908 reclassified it as a sauropod. Wow. So it started out as a Triassic dinosaur, then sauropod, then stegosaur, then back to sauropod. Then theropod, then sauropod. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dystrophius was herbivorous. I mentioned it was estimated to weigh 12 tons. There was another estimate that found it to weigh about the same as an elephant, which can weigh about 13,000 pounds or 5,900 kilograms. The fossils were found on a steep canyon hillside in hard rock by Newberry, who made the sketches, hence the difficulty in excavating. Newberry was a geologist on the Engineer Exploring Expedition under Captain McComb from the U.S. Army doing a survey around the Colorado and Green Rivers. And actually, going back, at first they thought the fossils were from an ichthyosaur. They couldn't properly excavate the fossils, so they left most of the bones there for a future geologist. They did take a few, though. They had to scale the steep cliff and then hike to the fossils. Now, according to Cope, the fossils were found, quote, in close proximity, the bones of the limb in nearly normal relation, end quote. Some paleontologists think dystrophius may be a nomum dubium, but not everybody agrees. The fossils are just too indeterminate, so that can be hard to tell. The site where it was found was lost for a while, but then in the 1970s, Fran Barnes went looking for it, and in 1988, found a site that fit the description, and that turned out to be the original dystrophius quarry site. In 2014, dystrophius project was launched to find more fossils. It was a collaboration between the Museum of Moab, Natural History Museum of Utah, and the Bureau of Land Management. And they excavated even more fossils in 2017. Ooh, they found them. <laughs> yeah. That was quick. 2014 they started, and 2017 they already excavated them. It took a long time to find, though. There's a cast of a dystrophious forelimb on display at the Museum of Moab, too. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.